October 23rd, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, and our opening hymn is 669 in the blue book in your pew, 669. Yeah. <laughs> page 355 in the prayer book. That's the red book in your view. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, create in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joel. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain. <clears throat> the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years <clears throat> that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord, of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 65. Um, We'll do it by half first to the asterisk. Um, you are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you, you shall ask the Lord of Jerusalem. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come. Because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are. But you will walk them out. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God, of our salvation. O Lord of all the ends of the earth and the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are carried about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dust to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. <clears throat> you prepare the grain. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness. And your paths overflow with plenty. 
May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing. And the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. And let them shout for joy and sing. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles, Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The, uh, our characters today are a Pharisee and a, a tax collector. Um, Jesus, once again, furthering his, uh, his subject of prayer, talks about, really, our attitude in terms of prayer, what we do, how we do it, um, what we say, what we're thinking, What's the inner part of prayer? Religion it really has two foci. It's the, the temple and the home. Um, historically speaking, what was going on in Judaism at the time of Jesus was the Pharisees had been working already for about 200 years to um, 
decentralize Judaism. Now, they would not have said that if somebody had asked them, what are you doing? But what the Pharisees were, were the rabbis of the synagogues in the local community. And the temple was the central place for worship for Jews in those days. But the synagogue was the place for the community, the local town, whatever it was. It, this is where um, Jews became literate. They learned Hebrew. They learned to read it as well as speak it. Um, now, most of them, realistically speaking, spoke Aramaic. That's what all the neighborhood around uh, Judea at the time spoke. But they also spoke Hebrew and they read it. They were literate people. Even the women were literate by and large. So they could read their scripture. Now, there was no ceremonial place for women at the time to read scripture in the service, but they could read it often. It was not unheard of for women to be literate at the time. But what was happening in um, Judaism was something that was preparing it for what happened in 70 AD, which was the destruction of the temple. When the temple was destroyed and the Jews were dispersed over um, the Roman Empire, they went with an understanding that their religion was a religion not only of the temple, but also of the home. And so they celebrated in the home, Shabbat, that celebration that started at sundown on Friday and ended at sundown on Saturday, still going on as part of the, the reality of Judaism. They only gather for the high holidays, which we are in that neighborhood of time for them with uh, Yom Kippur and, and Rosh Hashanah. Um, there are other holidays, but um, and the only one that's shared with Christianity is Pentecost itself. The, uh, although there's a different emphasis for Christians and for Jews. Um, well, religiously speaking, these two people came to the temple because that's where they wanted to pray. And the Pharisee reminded God that he was a pious person, that he was somebody who was doing what he was supposed to do. He was fasting twice a week. He was giving a tenth of his income. Uh, he was tithing, in other words. He, uh, he was doing the outward signs of his Jewish faith. He was pious. Um, but what Jesus is pointing out is, is that uh, the Pharisee's attitude is um, not really conducive to listening to, to God. He's coming before him, he's praying, but he's not really letting God be God, is he? He's saying, look at all these wonderful things I'm doing for you. I fast, I tithe. These are no small things, by the way, uh, but they nevertheless are external things that are part of the religious life. But his attitude toward those is, look at me. Whoa, boy, am I wonderful. Um, and God, aren't you lucky to have me as one of your, uh, one of your disciples? Well, the problem with that is is that it doesn't let God be God. The tax collector, on the other hand, comes in, doesn't even 
lookup doesn't really respond in the external ways that are expected of him in the temple to look up to heaven, to, uh, to pray, maybe even out loud. Um, instead, he keeps his eyes ca downcast because he knows himself to be a sinner. And so he says that to God. Have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. None of the external works of my religious life do I do. I don't tithe. I don't uh, fast. I have a secular job that requires all kinds of things of me. Uh, but get, have mercy on me. I'm doing the best I can as we like to say in this day of bicycles, I'm pedaling as hard as I can. Um, he, his attitude allows God to be God. He's saying to God, have mercy on me. I am not doing anything that um, you can construe as worthy of me religiously. Now, Jesus said about the story, he goes home justified. Home being the other, the other part of the religious life. So the tax collector can go back to his secular life and live it as he needs to live it. But he lives it as a person in grace. He has grace. Now, Paul and others have made the, the very important uh, understanding is that the works we do do not get us into heaven. They just don't get us into heaven. They are a response to what heaven has done for us, what God has done for us. What God has done for us is to justify us when we are justified. And the only way that we have access to that is in our internal understanding, our internal understanding of what is going on. We, are, we need to be humble. If we're not humble, we can't hear what God wants because, you know, otherwise we're just operating out of our ego and we're saying, oh boy, are you lucky to have me as your servant? I am such a wonderful servant. You know, um, well, grace is totally unavailable to that person. Uh, totally unavailable to me when I have that attitude. Totally unavailable to you. It's only available to us when we are humble. When we say to ourselves, have mercy on me, a sinner. Um, you know, this week wasn't perfect. I did things that I should not have done. Um, and in that humble approach, it allows God to be God. It also allows oneself to be oneself in front of that. And in that process, one then can see and feel and touch the grace that is in one's life. And when we do that, then we are doing all kinds of things for God. We're often doing things that we never thought we would do. God brings us these little treasures, these crosses to bear on occasion, and says, how about this? And we say, mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. But then we go and do it. And we do it, why? Because we know we are blessed. We are full of God's grace. And the only way we know that is because we've been humble enough to realize that we do absolutely nothing to make grace available to us. It is simply given to us. It is a gift given to each of us. And... Uh, Paul and Augustine and Martin Luther uh, and many others have reminded us of that. Martin Luther said, uh, if you really preach grace, nobody would go to church. 
because they don't have to because grace is simply uh, available now we go to church because we want to be reminded that we need to be humble so we can understand that grace is part of our life and we forget it let's face it I mean you know uh, remember those days when we were you know Christmas and Easter only and uh, I don't know if you ever did that but there was a time in college that that was pretty much how I did it and uh, that's not enough you don't get the subtleties of humility that way well so the Pharisee and the tax collector two people coming before God one telling God how wonderful he is for God that he is a, a servant of God and the other one saying you know I'm really a sinner and my life needs your mercy when we realize that we open ourselves to what God wants for us and what God wants for us is the blessing that God gives in grace all the time and with that grace we go into the world and do what we need to do okay well um, that's what I got out of the lessons for this week. Uh, perhaps you might have some comment you'd like to make, uh, response. Um, it is welcome, as you know. It is a job interview. He was treating it like one. What? It isn't a job interview. He was treating it like one. That's right. Well, that's a good comment. Yes, I get exactly a job interview. Yeah, I want the job. <clears throat> um, or boy, you can have me because I'm so wonderful. You know I'm great. Um, well, okay. I'm glad you think so. Uh, but I think I'll take that one. Anyway, good good comment. All right, well, let's stand and say our creed. We're on page uh, 358 in the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true to God from true to God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, who in all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary. And was made man. For our sake he was crucified and hung on his side. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again for every judge living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, a giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, and His worship and glorified, He has spoken to the prophets, who believe in the only yet found in the Apostolic Church. We acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of his sins. We look for the resurrection of dead men, and the life of the Lord will come and come. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 6, on page 392. In, in peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our, for our families, families, friends, and neighbors, and, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who are for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. 
for the living of the hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For Patricia, Terry, Janet, Judy, Glenda, Maggie, Bob, Corky, Heidi, Donna, Wayne, David, Sarah Gay, Don, for Steve, and for Sally. Hear us, Lord. We are your prayer. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For this great fall weather. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, the most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. So, any announcements? Um, okay, um, that sounds good. Uh, reminder that uh, uh, we're following our COVID protocol for, for communion, which means that um, you have a, a cup with the, with the host in it, you just take it out and then I'll come by and pour some wine uh, for, the, for the wine, and it is wine. Um, okay, well, walk in love is, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just one more quick reminder that we'll do coffee hour across the street at our house next week. Right next door, yeah, great. Well, next week we'll be in Oh, next week we're going across the street. Next week we're going across the street. Oh yeah, they, they, they go into Halloween in a way, a big way. It's beautiful. And we appreciate it. Okay, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an <coughs> offering and sacrifice to God. 337. Uh, 337. 337. Three, three,
letter A on page 361 in the prayer book. Also, the uh, shortly we'll be singing the Sanctus, which is in S130. S130, the S's are in the beginning of the hymnal. Okay, you need that. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give the thanks and praise. everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we've fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood and the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, 
we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also. <clears throat> that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive the those who trespass against us. And we do not have any temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us peace be peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And thanks be to all of you. Have a good week. You have a great one.